I'm going to do SAC 20D problem number two. Number two has a, a wire carrying a current straight at us. And uh, it's got a current I and diameter D. And the first thing we're supposed to do is sketch the magnetic field of the current carrying wire. Okay, the current's coming straight at us. Now the right hand rule, here's the, the cross section of the wire, current in it coming straight at us. By the right hand rule, I point my thumb. Uh, straight out of the screen or straight out of the page if you're looking at this on a piece of paper at me and uh, that's the thumb of the right hand and the fingers of the right hand will curl around counterclockwise so the magnetic field lines make circles around the center in a counterclockwise direction. This occurs both in here and that we can treat everything inside that circle as being a wire carrying current straight at us. And then we also get some outside the wire. And outside the magnetic field gets weaker with distance. So I'll try to depict them as being farther and farther apart. Okay. Put some arrowheads on there. We've got a depiction of the magnetic field associated with that rather fat wire. It's got a diameter D all the way across. Okay, let's. That was uh, part A. Um, let's take a look at part B. Find the magnetic field as a function of the distance r from the center of the wire of the current carrying wire valid for points inside the wire. Okay, let's uh, start part B down here and draw another picture of the wire. Another copy of our wire here and we're supposed to find the magnetic field at a distance r away from the center of the wire. Inadvertent brush mark there. So uh, let's say at a point like this one. Now from symmetry, we know that at all the points, a given distance from the center of the wire, and I'll call that distance r, the magnetic field is the same. And it's along that path. It's parallel to that circle. So I'm going to use Ampere's law, which states that uh, the integral around a closed path of B dot DL, that's the component of B along the path times an infinitesimal element along the path, is equal to mu zero times I, where this is the magnetic permittivity of free space. And this is the current enclosed by the loop. I think I'll emphasize that right here by putting a subscript enclosed. Okay, first off, the magnetic field itself on that entire path is right along the path. So the uh, integral of B dot DL is just going to be B. Uh, B is the same everywhere along the path. And then I got B times the integral of DL, well that's just the length of the path, or B times 2 pi R, where R is the length of the path. And that's equal to mu zero I enclosed. Now, enclosed, I mean, passing through, coming out at us, uh, the current that passes through this loop, this imaginary loop, this Amperian loop of radius r. Well, only a fraction of the current passes through there because some of the current passes through these parts of the wire. And the fraction is whatever fraction this area is of the total. The area of this loop, this Amperian loop, this perfect circle is of the total. Well, that area, let's say I enclosed going to shorten that subscript to EN. Um, you know, circled by the loop there is going to be the ratio of the areas. That's uh, 
pi r squared is the area of the little loop. Uh, the big circle, the whole wire, has got a diameter lowercase d, so the radius is d over 2. So that'll be divided by pi times d over 2 squared. That represents uh, the fraction that this area is of the total gray area. Multiply that by the total current through the wire, and I got the current that passes through the Amperian loop, what I call it I enclosed. So uh, that's going to be, uh, I got uh, 4, once I square that, in the uh, denominator of the denominator. So that comes up top. And then it's uh, R squared over D squared times I. Uh, that'll be what I enclosed is, and uh, I'll just go ahead and replace that here. U0 times R squared over D squared times I, oops, uh, yeah, the I itself, but I need a 4 in there as well. So let's put a 4 R squared. And then uh, the 2 partly cancels out and uh, divide uh, both sides. One of the R's cancels out. Divide both sides by pi. Then I got B is equal to get a 2 over pi times mu 0 times R over D squared times I. And yes, that's my final answer for part B. And then we'll be moving on to part C, I reckon. Let's check this out. Uh, see if we answer the question. Find the magnetic field as a function of R from, okay. And then find the magnetic field as a function of the distance r from the center of the wire of the current carrying wire valid for the points outside the wire. Um, let's try that one. I'm going to paste this over to here. Yeah, I might get a little more room. Okay. Now we're talking at a point outside the wire such as this one, and again, the magnetic field at all points on this path. This will be my Amperian loop, imaginary loop in space, perfect circle, radius R, centered on the center of the wire. And uh, the magnetic field out there is everywhere along the path, so that integral of B dot DL B is everywhere parallel to DL, so it just becomes an integral of BDL, but B is also a constant. This time I'm going to go ahead and factor it out. And that's all equal to mu sub zero times the current that passes through that loop. Well, in this case, the entire current I passes through the loop coming at us, and therefore it's just equal to mu zero times I, and the uh, total length here, if I add up all the in infinitesimal lengths, I get uh, lengths, I get the uh, circumference of that circle, which is just 2 pi times R. Let's say I get a, a different result if the loop is completely outside the wire, because I always enclose all the current, uh, no matter how big the loop is, as long as it's bigger then uh, as long as the radius is greater than the radius of the wire. So B looks quite a bit different. It's going to be equal to mu zero I over two pi times one over R. All right, let's see if we got room for a part D here.
you what they want in part D. Don't use these values for parts A, B, and C. Well, of course, I didn't do that. I didn't see them until now. But now, assume the current I to be 4 amperes and the diameter D to be 8 centimeters for values of R from 0 to 19 centimeters make a graph of the magnitude of the magnetic field as a function of the distance R from the wire okay I 4 amperes R 4 centimeters so uh, for uh, R values in uh, or on the loop that is for values of R from 0 to uh, 0.04 meters uh, the expression we had from above was this and uh, I should be able to evaluate everything out except for the, the R. So that'll be a 2, that's mu 0 is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7th tesla meters per ampere. And divide that by pi. some pi's cancel and then we had the, the 4.0 amperes and uh, the D we said was 0 .04 0 0.08 meters meaning the radius is 0 0.04 meters but I need uh, that's why I had the uh, R going out there but uh, the D I'm going to check the problem statement make sure I got that right I think it's 0.08 meters and then I gotta square that. Let's check that. Um, yeah, diameter D is eight centimeters. That does make the radius four centimeters. And eight centimeters is point zero eight meters. And then I got the, the unknown R in there. So this is this turns out to be five point zero times 10 to the minus fourth Tesla's Tesla per meter and that's uh, some value with units times R where R is a, a variable that'll be the expression for B for R up to 0.04 meters and then uh, for R greater than and it's actually greater than or equal to 0.04 meters uh, better have the same result right at uh, the same exact value as, as what this one evaluates to when R is equal to 0.04 meters. But uh, we have the other expression that was valid for points outside the wire, uh, namely B is equal to mu zero over two pi times I times one over R. <coughs> And mu zero again four pi times ten to the minus seventh. Uh, let's fix up that minus sign a little bit. Tesla meters per ampere divided by the two pi. Now that'll make that a to cancel that two out and uh, the current is 4.0 amperes and all that goes times 1 over R and that should be uh, 2 times 4 is 8 times 10 to the minus 7th tesla meters times 1 over R. <coughs> okay, so uh, I get a 
graph that for uh, r runs from 0 to 19 centimeters. Let's see if uh, we get a spreadsheet program on here. I guess we could go. Yeah, I think I'll go this way. There we go, Microsoft Excel. I'll put, uh, I'm going to go up to 19 in centimeters. I think I'll go in steps of, uh, that's about up to 20. If I go 0.2, let's, let's start with 0. 0, 0.2, 0 0.4, etc. That'll give me about 100 of them, so it'll probably look pretty smooth if I evaluate it with 100 points from 0 to 19 centimeters. And, woo -woo, a little too far there. And there's 0 to 19 centimeters. Of course, uh, what I need is uh, not centimeters, but uh, meters I'd like to have it in. So let's uh, replace that column beside it. In B, I'll put just whatever is in A. That's equal A1 slash um, 100. And uh, that'll convert. Uh, that'll make it so that B contains the same value as column A, but B is in meters, whereas A was in centimeters. So it goes from 0 to 0.19 meters. Okay, now in C, I'm going to put, uh, it might be a good idea to put headers on here, but I, I think you guys, uh, I think I'll go ahead and do that. Let's insert a row. Uh, this is R in meters, whereas uh, this was R in centimeters. Put a little space in there. And over here, what I want is B in Tesla. So uh, the first expression we had for the magnetic field, let's see if we can find that, was uh, 5 times 10 to the minus 4th tesla meter times r. 5 times 10 to the minus 4th times r. That's uh, equals 5e minus 4 times, that's star, times R, where R is uh, whatever I got over here in this column, so it'll be B2 in this case, and then uh, copy that down. That's only good out to 4 centimeters, so that'll be good out to there. And then uh, starting at that point, I, think I could start right there. I got point, uh, four zeros and a 2, but I'm going to start at the next spot. I got a different expression for uh, B, it's equal, and then take a look over here, uh, 8 times 10 to the minus 7th times 1 over R. That will go in as 8E minus 7 slash R. 8E negative 7 slash, and then R, uh, the one I'm working on makes R B23. That's the item right to the left of it. B23. And then uh, copy that down. You see, it's it's just about this is two times ten to the minus five. This is just about the same thing. So it looks like it's picking up right where it was supposed to. And then uh, I can select everything here. I wonder. Go even try including the headers there. Got that selected. I'll make a graph. I'm going to call it an XY scatter plot. And I'll connect the uh, data points by straight lines. So if it looks uh, jagged, that's suggesting that I need some more points. 
I'm going to try next. And I'm just going to try to finish and see what that looks like. Get rid of that. Blow it up a little bit. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, I don't think I really need that. Um, B of T is B in Tesla, actually. I should probably label this. This is B versus distance. Uh, we notice as the distance increases, initially B is increasing linearly, and then it's dropping off like uh, 1 over R. Here's the linear increase. Um, as we're getting farther and farther from the center of the wire, but we're encompassing more and more of the current as we move outward. So the magnetic field actually gets stronger towards uh, the skin of that wire, increases linearly, and then uh, as soon as you get to the skin of the wire and start moving outside the wire, the uh, magnetic field dies off like uh, 1 over R. And uh, that concludes that problem. What was it? Uh, SAC 20D.